Deadly debris flows explained. More than a dozen people are dead and many more are injured after a torrent of mud and debris swept through California's Santa Barbara County last week. This deadly and shockingly common occurrence is called a debris flow, though it's also commonly called a mudslide. Mountainous areas that have been ravaged by wildfire are often susceptible to debris flows. Fire kills vegetation and nutrients in the soil, creating a hydrophobic or water repellent layer below the surface that increases runoff and soil erosion. During intense rainfall, water that would normally be absorbed into the ground instead saturates loose sediments, causing a river of mud to flow down the slope. Debris flows grow in size as they pick up boulders, trees, and other debris, and are powerful enough to uproot or destroy entire neighborhoods. Many of the deaths in Montecito reportedly occurred while most residents were asleep after heavy rain fell in a short period of time around 3.30 a.m. Here are more deadly flows. Sometimes your only option is to run. When a volcano erupts big time, it spits out a fast-moving and incredibly destructive mass of material known as a pyroclastic flow. And according to the United States Geological Survey, if you ever find yourself in the path of one, you should run in the opposite direction and run fast. Pyroclastic flows are made up of a basal flow of volcanic ash, lava, rock, and gases, which move beneath a cloud of ash. Their temperatures can exceed 1,000 degrees Celsius, and they can move at 700 kilometers per hour. Typically, pyroclastic flows move downslope, but they can go uphill when the ratio of gas to ash is higher. This is known as a pyroclastic surge. These dense pyroclastic surges can even move over water. Pyroclastic flows generally destroy everything in their path, including vegetation, buildings, and people. There are generally two kinds of pyroclastic flow. The first type forms when an eruption column cools and the ash becomes too dense to maintain an upward thrust. The second type is rarer and occurs when so much pressure builds up inside a volcano that it erupts laterally and boils over. The last known example of this is when Mount St. Helens in Washington State erupted in 1980. So there you have it. If you ever happen to be near a volcano when it blows its top, now you know what to do. Massive landslide caused killer tsunami. Researchers say a mega tsunami that devastated a Greenland settlement in June was triggered by a landslide. On the night of June 17th, a landslide hit Karat Fjord on Greenland's west coast. The landslide was so large, it produced a seismic signal that suggested a magnitude 4.1 earthquake. Large volumes of rock plunged 1,000 feet into the waters below, shattering a glacier and triggering a mega tsunami with waves over 90 meters high. The tsunami devastated a nearby fishing village, washing away 11 houses and leaving at least four people presumed dead. A team from the Georgia Institute of Technology visited the site to collect information and are aiming to produce a 3D reconstruction of the incident. Researchers also determined that another landslide in the fjord may be imminent, leading authorities to evacuate three villages in the region. Though the cause of the landslide has not been determined, experts say factors such as those brought about by climate change may increase their frequency. Landslide in East Java kills two, dozens still missing. At least two people are confirmed dead and dozens more are missing after a landslide buried a village in East Java, Indonesia on April 1st. Heavy rain over several days caused a large sheet of rock and earth to dislodge and slide roughly 800 meters down the side of a mountain. There were warning signs. On March 26th, residents in the area reported seeing a 15 meter long crack on a cliff above the village expand to 20 meters. The alert went out and residents began to leave for safety the same day. However, many returned over the following days to harvest ginger from their fields. Rainwater had infiltrated the limestone subsoil and at about 8 a.m. local time, the land gave way, burying families beneath rock and mud. Seven excavators were sent in to clear the debris. In some places, the earth was 17 meters thick. Officials say the clear-up and recovery effort could take up to a month, depending on the weather. Initial rescue teams were obstructed by traffic jams caused by people flocking to see the landslide. According to Indonesia's Antara News Agency, at least 26 people are still missing. Bali's Mount Agung is ready to go bang. This is Bali's scenic Mount Agung volcano. 
It's been quiet for five decades, but experts are warning it's now ready to blow. Indonesian officials have marked several danger zones for a potential Mount Agong eruption and have evacuated over 75,000 people in the past days. According to The Guardian, hundreds of tremors have been noted near the volcano each day. If this trend continues, experts expect an eruption is imminent. The most deadly threat resulting from it would be pyroclastic flows, which is a superheated killer gas that lays waste to everything in its path and can travel up to 450 miles per hour. Check back with Tomo News for more on this developing story in the coming days.